All right. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is February 24th, 2020. And finally, after a number of attempts and, uh, and some rewrites, I am ready to give you a an under 30-minute introduction to who the Gospels are speaking to, is speaking to in the end time understanding. All right? We're going to get started right into this. I need to keep this under 30 minutes. So for those after you've seen this, you want to understand more, you want to go dig into many more hours of revelation, you can come to the Ministry Revealed YouTube channel. You can go to Ministry Revealed Facebook, Ministry Revealed Twitter, or the Ministry Revealed website where we have all the videos there for easy and free download as well. All right, so let's get started. Today's video, and I'm going to do my best to keep with the script that I have. All right, I'm going to try not to veer off too much. Okay, it'll keep me on, on track. In today's video, we're going, uh, uh, today's video is going to be the introduction to who the Gospels are speaking to. It was the first great revelation that was reveal revealed to me on September 8th, 2017. It has continued to reveal itself to me ever since. I know many were hoping I would also include in this introduction video the second great revelation that, that followed. But due to the great detail that I must show, even as an intro, it's simply too much to put into one teaching for the purposes we wanted, which were short and as detailed as possible. So having said that, I will briefly introduce or hint at the second one toward the end of today's. So you'll have an idea of what's coming next. Next, And God willing, I expect to do a third and maybe more with the third being the greater understanding of Daniel 9. You'll come to see how each one reveals and confirms the other. Today, you'll begin to understand once and for all the mystery of the Synoptic Gospels. Um, the mystery, sorry, the mystery of who the Synoptic Gospels truly speak to in the end times and why it matters more than anyone could have imagined. You'll come to see that having been taught the end times from mainly the gospel of Matthew's perspective has hindered our vision of the greater understanding of the end of days. As for the gospel of John, we will reserve him for the introduction video regarding the second great revelation. So let's get started with something simple that I expect once you see it, you'll say, wait a minute. I was always taught just the one, okay? And you'll see, it's in more than just the words we read. It's in their definitions. Remember, these are end time revelations that are being revealed in these teachings. Let's go to what Jesus said on the cross. In Matthew 27, verse 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. We'll skip through that. Uh, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The word forsaken is the Greek word 1459, which means to leave behind. Well, that's interesting. Do you think Jesus believed he was going to be left behind? Absolutely not. Let's keep reading. In Mark's version, in Mark 15, verse 34, it says, and at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, which is, and we'll skip the, just the, the language change, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's the same word forsaken, G1459, to leave behind. Let me just show you guys that, just so you guys can see for yourselves. You see, it's one of those things we've all been taught from Matthew, right? So this is the one generally everybody knows right here. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's Greek word 1459 and it means to leave behind. Okay, very important to understand. But, I'll sip coffee. But in Luke, we read something completely different. In Luke 23 verse 46, 
And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. What is, what's, what's with the change going on here? And the word commend is the Greek word 3908, which means to place alongside. So what do we see here? In Luke, we see him ask his father to receive his spirit alongside him. But in both Mark and Matthew, he says, why have you left me behind? Why are they talking about being left behind and Luke hearing something completely different being placed alongside the father? Let's keep going and you'll start to understand much, much more clearly. Next, let's have a look at something just about no one has ever noticed and certainly have never understood before. It's one of our favorites to reveal the truth of this understanding. We call it revealed in the robe. I'll show you here. In the list of videos, you'll see it way down here. We're going to go down, scroll down, more, more, more. And you're going to see this video. If you guys want to see it in, in greater explanation, in greater detailed breakdown, we have it right here called Revealed in the Robe, all right? It's a fantastic video for this revelation that you're going to briefly see here. It's all in the color of the robe Jesus was given to wear to his crucifixion. But because we've all been taught from Matthew, most have never noticed it, including, this is amazing, including the dozens of pastors and teachers we've spoken to. From around the world, many that many of you have spoken to, many that I have spoken to, they've not one of them actually told us they realized they, they had known that there were different colored robes. Who all said the same thing, they didn't even know there were different colors. Okay, so let's see. In Matthew 27, verse 28, and they stripped him and put him, put on him a scarlet robe. In Mark 15. Verse 17, and they clothed him with purple and plated a crown of thorns and so forth. In Luke 23, verse 11, and Herod with the men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe. The word for gorgeous is the Greek word 2986, and it means radiant, magnificent, sumptuous in appearance. And comes from the words bright, clear, gorgeous, and white. Which one would you say represents the bride of Christ? Pretty clear answer, isn't it? And where do we see the other two colors, purple and scarlet? That's right, the tribulation. In Revelation 17, verse 3 and 4, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and so forth. Notice gorgeous colored robe is nowhere in the tribulation. So who is the tribulation for that we're able to discern to this point? The two who cried, Why have you left us behind? and purple and scarlet. This brings us to the next part that goes into greater detail of who these Gospels are speaking to. But keep in mind, this is still only an introduction. Much more is found at Ministry Reveal. Now we're going to go read what Jesus tells each of them as final instructions in the last portion of the last chapter of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke <clears throat> to see what he wanted them to do. But this time we're going to do it in reverse. You'll, be, you'll better grasp who and better yet when each book is speaking to. The story in each of them is about Jesus appearing to them, right? We know at his, at his, from his resurrection, their instructions, and finally, how he leaves them, which is probably the most revealing of them all. Again, 
Remember, this is only the introduction, and there's much more detail on the subject that can be found at Ministry Revealed's social media outlets, all right? Let's begin at Luke chapter 24, verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry you here in the city or tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Luke 24 verse 51. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Verse 53. And were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Let's go see this difference as we go now into the last chapter of Mark. Mark 16, starting in verse 15, we'll go through to verse 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach, okay? Similar to, to Luke's, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. See? Luke was carried up. Mark is received up. Why the difference? We'll get to it. And they went forth and preached. See, they're still preaching. Everywhere. This is key right here. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Who does this group sound like here in Mark? Who does this group sound like that Jesus is speaking to at the end of Mark? At the end of Mark. What did we see up here in Luke? At the end of Luke, he's telling them to tarry. It's, it's, the, it's the Holy Spirit, right? The, the Holy Ghost that's going to be given to them, the promise of the Father, which we know is the beginning of Acts, right? Acts chapter 2. This is a group that's chosen to work during the time of seals. But there's also a group being carried up. You'll see this. Well, in Mark, we see it different. We're now at the end of Mark. And listen to what it says. This wording, it says they're going out to preach throughout the whole earth. But there's no receiving of, of the Holy Ghost, waiting for the promise of the Father here. But there's a group that's going to be given these powers and abilities. And then you see Jesus here is received up into heaven and then they go out and work they're preached everywhere and the lord is working with them so who does this group sound like in mark that jesus is speaking to at the end of mark it's the 144,000. remember it says the lord working with them so let's see where in the end time scriptures we have the lord working with a group of people in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with them 144,000. Skip down to verse 4, Revelation 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they were virgins. These are they which followed the lamb wheresoever he goeth. See? See? With the Lord working with them. Here's the Lord, the Lamb on Mount Zion with them. And they're following him wherever he goes. This is the group going out to preach. Keep going. They're the group being sealed from Mark's group as the 144,000. Before the rest of the people represented in Mark. Who are the sleeping church, you'll see in a minute. Are now awake having gone through the fire of seals, 
are now received up as the guests, raptured, exactly as we read throughout all of Revelation 7, after the seals, right? After the six seals of the fiery tribulation. In Revelation 7, 3, it says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. They are the 144,000, okay? We all know this. When does this happen? After chapter 6, after the seals, right? Which is then followed by the great multitude, the rapture. So you followed there in Mark, there's a group given these powers and these abilities and they're told to go out and to preach unto all the nations. And then we see a type and shadow of Christ who is received up. Okay, so a group sealed and chosen to work. A group received up. And then they go out and do the work, the other, the, those that were sealed. So see, it's then followed by the great multitude. Here's your sealing of the 144,000 after seals. And here's your great multitude after the 144,000 are sealed. Revelation 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and so forth. Verse 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. You see, and what about the difference between it saying Jesus being carried up in Luke, like we saw, compared to him being received up in Mark? What's the type and shadow that we have here? Not that we all do this. Right? It's a tradition, but it's not that we all do this. What am I talking about? But the bride is carried over the threshold, whereas the guests are received. Where do you think this tradition comes from, guys? Check this out. Women being carried through a door frame. See that? Through a door frame, through a door frame, through a door frame, through a door frame, door frame, door frame. Why? It's the bride being carried over the threshold and who would be received at a wedding or at a banquet the guests are the ones who are being received you see so we have now luke being told that there's a group being chosen that's going to work they're going to have the holy ghost power anointing like like acts chapter 2.0 i call it and then there's a, there's a group that is going to be carried away in what Jesus was said there would be carried away into heaven. We read it in, in, in Mark and in Mark, we see there's a group that's going to be sealed with these incredible powers and abilities and none of these serpents or things will hurt them. And then we see the type and shadow of Jesus being received up. It's the type and shadow of the group, this great multitude that will be received up as the guests. Now check this out. And now Matthew's, the most telling of all, and Jesus is neither carried up nor received up. And it's in three verses. There's so much revelation. In the last chapter of Matthew, verse 18 through 20, and Jesus came and spake to them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay? All power. There was no power given into him uh, at the end of Luke or the end of Mark. All right? All of heaven and all of earth. And he tells them, go ye therefore and teach. Not preach this time. And teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching. Again, no preaching, teaching them to observe, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
This tells the whole story when you understand Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Notice a number of differences here in Matthew compared to the other two. First, there's no preaching, like I said, anymore. Only teaching. Second, he says, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Why? Third, he says he's now going to be with them unto the end of the world. Again, why only here? Did not everyone hear the same message? Were they not all there listening to the same thing? The answers are, to the first one, no more preaching and now only teaching, because he told us in Colossians 2, 16 through 18, let no man therefore judge you in meat, meaning what you eat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, this is the answer, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. What is he saying? These things, you're not going to be doing them right. Nobody really understands to do them right for the most part. There's a million calendars out there. Nobody's even sure what day they're doing it on, and people are arguing over calendars. You see, because these things are a shadow of things to come, but we're free to do them if we desire to do them. We are free to do them because we, we're going to be doing them wrong. I know when I try to observe these things, I know I don't have them perfect. I'll even change what time of year I do it because... I don't know which calendar I should really be following. We're doing these things in a voluntary humility. These are the things that will now be taught by this group sent out during the millennial reign with Christ. This is what is being said here. Teaching them, no longer preaching. Why? Because the Lord will have returned. So now he's going to teach them and these guys are to go out and teach everything they've observed and that they've been commanded to teach to those throughout the world during the millennial reign. This is what's going on. The other two answers are given to us in Revelation 11 verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. You see, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth at the seventh trumpet. And I am with you always, even until the end of the world. At the seventh trumpet, everything has become his. And he's there forever and ever now. All three of them are completely different, as we can see in Matthew. It's about him having returned and established his millennial reign in Matthew. So, what are the things we can see between the three Gospels in all of this? Luke is to the bride that will escape all these things. Pre-trib, with a gorgeous robe being carried up into the arms of the Father. Mark is to the left-behind, sleeping church that will go through the seals as the purple robe in tribulation and will be received up in the rapture mid-trib as the guests. Matthew is to the left-behind, Judah, Jews, that will go through the trumpets as the scarlet robe and will be here at the return of Christ, feet down on the Mount of Olives. And he will remain unto the end of the world or the end of the thousand years, the 7,000th year of rest. The revelation is Luke is pre-trib escape. Mark is mid-trib rapture 
and Matthew is post-trib return. Here it is directly revealed from Scripture. In 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 4 and then 14, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such as one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows how that he was caught up into paradise. Verse 14, we'll jump down to 14. He's talking to them as if the third time. He says, behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. So one is such as one, harpazo, such as one, like a rapture. This is was, harpazo, was a rapture. The first one goes to the third heaven. The second one goes to paradise. The third time he's coming to them. The words such as one are the Greek words 5108, meaning that is sort of or like, meaning the first one is like a rapture, not a rapture, but it's sort of like a rapture. This is the escape. And Paul tells us that this one went to the third heaven. The second one, he says, was a rapture. Now, that one is pretty clear. It's telling us that it was indeed the rapture. And where can we confirm this one? Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. For her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The first is before the birth pains. This is for Luke. The second is after the birth pains, which is for Mark. And finally, Paul then tells us the third time he is ready to come, all as a type of Christ. So what do we have? All three times, pre, mid, post, are all true. And the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Matthew, Mark, Luke becomes Luke, Mark, Matthew in the end times. And finally, as we get to the tail end here, and finally, time for the hint into the introduction teaching of the second great revelation. It will tie together how it could possibly be that pre, mid, and post are all true but not in only seven years, as we've been taught. Part of the answer is in what I mentioned earlier, in the fact that we've been taught the tribulation time from only the perspective of Matthew. But here's the hint to the rest of the answer. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, and the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Just like creation, six days, the seventh rest. Just like six years and the seventh is the year of Shemitah rest. Just like 6,000 years and the seventh is rest. What do we see in seals and trumpets? Six seals and the seventh is rest. Six trumpets and the seventh is rest. And what comes at the seventh trumpet of rest? Just like we read early in Revelation 11 verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So your hint is six work and seventh rest twice. For much more detail about all of this and more, Please visit Ministry Revealed YouTube channel, website, Facebook, or Twitter. God bless you guys. Comfort and watch over us all in our families. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Till the next one. Bye for now.